Yeah. Now we will uh, create a new Hello World project with the uh, set payload in Mule 4 application. So Mule 4 applications we are going to develop by using NFI Studio 7 version. And uh, here we are using Mule 4.3 version as a runtime. And now we discuss the different uh, navigation panes in AnyPoint Studio. So this is the AnyPoint Studio tool or IDE. IDE means Integrated Development Environment that can be useful to build the applications. This is a package explorer where we can create new projects or applications. And uh, this we will uh, call it as canvas. We are going to create a new project, new mural project. We will name the application as Hello World. By default, it came with 4.4 enterprise edition, so we will continue with 4.4 uh, runtime motion uh, in this sessions. Now we have created a new project, and by default. All the MU4 applications are a Maven based application. That means it will create a Palm XML. Palm XML is a project object model based application. And if any uh, project dependencies are needed, then we can add them in the dependencies section within Palm here. So, for to add any dependency, all we need is a project name and the group id that means group id artifact id and the version if we know these details then we can add them as a dependency applications and as we discussed this is a package explorer where we can add a new xml files or any resource files or any properties that are needed for project And on the right hand side, this is a mule palette where we can search for the mule components or message process that are needed to build a mule flow. And this is outline whatever the XML files that we have created. If we want to uh, go to that particular files and uh, see the content, so then we can come to outline and we can see that. And this is a console panel or uh, other property, uh, other properties, or if uh, any component is created, and then if we need to edit those uh, properties, then we can make use of this console panel. Now we are going to create a Hello World application, and uh, within that, we are creating a flow. For that we are going to search for the flow component within meal palette we are going to drag and drop that uh, component into canvas so here it have the flow name and the initial state by default the initial state of any flow is started if we do not specify it explicitly and if we want to uh, change that state whenever the application runs then we can uh, change it to uh, the required one so by default it is started i am uh, i'm naming it as this and max concurrency it is one of the additional property that how many threads that can be run 
parallelly for this flow. Now, since we are going to uh, create this services or API, or maybe it is an application, and we want to expose it as a REST services. For that purpose, we are creating a HTTP listener. Listener is source endpoint. So here, uh, yeah, we see that by creating this flow, we have source and the process, and also we have a default error handling. These are the three sections that contains within a mule flow. Now we are going to create a source. Source means from where the event can be triggered. Now we are creating HTTP listener. All we need to do is drag and drop the component into the required position. Now in HTTP listener, we have these sections to configure the properties and the additional uh, configurations that are needed. If anything is, uh, uh, we, we wanted to make use of the flow or response timeouts or any uh, advanced sections are needed. All the configurations can be done by using this uh, uh, pan. Yeah, here this is a display. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we want to name it as a get. Hello world. This one. So by modifying the display name you can observe the difference on the GUI graphical user interface within this canvas pane so by changing that name in the properties the listener display name is changed in the flow now to trigger this flow it is asking to create a basic settings connector configuration that means any flow or any HTTP component are, uh, needed a configuration. Now we are going to create one configuration. Click on the plus icon. And by default, it is having few properties like protocol. What is the protocol that we wanted to uh, expose as a service? Is it a HTTP protocol or HTTP S protocol? So in uh, these services, we have two kind of protocols like HTTP is uh, not much secure and HTTPS is more secure configuration. And host, by default, it uh, points to local host and if uh, we wanted to explicitly define it, we can give a local host as well. And but now I'm uh, going to leave it uh, to the default one. And here the port number. Why we need all this configuration is likewise, for example, if, if we need to access our uh, Gmail, so uh, what we'll do HTTPS colon uh, slash slash, and we are going to give the server name like service name google.com or gmail.com so that is nothing but a domain service name which is internally pointing to your ip address so that ip address is nothing but a host or host name and the port number port number by default for http it is going to uh, redirect to 80 and for https it will redirect to 443 likewise Whenever we expose our services, we need to provide this minimal information or configurations like to which host we need to uh, send the request and on which port the service is running. And there is one more property, base path. Base path is if we want to use this 
configuration to multiple flows or multiple endpoints then we can give a base path and uh, for now i am not using this base path i am leaving as it is yeah. and what is this uh, gen in general configurations we need to provide this path path is nothing but a resource name on which this uh, service is going to accessible we we'll see uh, yeah, we provide it as hello now the hello will become our resource name now we have just created a source point now we need to define the flow by creating other message processors i am going to use set payload I am going to set this payload to hello world. It is a simple string value I am assigning to a set payload. Set in mere flow, we generally pair this term payload. Payload is the business content. Now, in this flow, we are setting the business content as a hello world. That means, where whoever is going to consume our services this hello world service we are returning a hello world text or string string value in response now this flow is a simple flow and we have just created it now we wanted to run this service right click on the project or before that we need to save the changes right click on the project and there is an option run as run as mule application And by default, in this uh, AnyPoint Studio 7, Maven is uh, inbuilt and also JDK is inbuiltly provided by the Studio version. That we can check from AnyPoint Studio configurations. Yeah. Here, if you see, there is a use embedded Maven installation. That's why we don't need to uh, install it and uh, configure it uh, manually. Yeah, now we can see the application is deployed. Yes. Now to test this flow, before we hand over our services or deploy the services into any environment or any server, first we need to test the services as a developer that becomes as part of unit testing to test this we are going to use the postman tool So this is our postman and here they are giving an example how we can uh, invoke the services or what is the configurations needed.
the service that we have exposed is a traced service. That means it will have a minimum information like what is the method that we need to send and what is the URL and protocol. Here we have defined the service as HTTP and the host is 0, 0.0.0. .0. And port number and then the resource name all we need is provide this information and the method of service and click on send so you can see the response that we have configured in our flow is written in the postman response so this is a hello world and whenever you receive the response you can see the response code as well it is http response code and for success response it all starts with 200 201 and 202 this kind of response codes we get as a response success response now here there were no logs. If any exception occurs, we do not know what was happened in our flow. For that purpose, we need to configure three loggers. So there are default uh, components within mule palette. And we are going to use this logger component. And we are going to name it as flow start. And then the message we are going to log is flow started which flow was started and we are going to use define another logger at the end of the flow Now we are going to save these changes and to check whether the application is deployed successfully or not we can check that in the console panel. Yeah, Now we can see application it is successfully started. Send one more request yeah now we can see responses there yeah we have added few loggers and we can check them in the console panel yeah here we can see the message is printed flow started hello world flow and flow completed these two messages we have added in the flow now what we wanted to do is uh, instead of returning a simple hello world sorry instead of just returning a simple hello world we wanted to return the data along with the user who is going to send a request to us for that we are going to give an option to send the query parameter i am going to stop this application
now in this what we are going to achieve we are going to create a few headers query parameters and URI parameters for that we just wanted to create a new flow yeah before that uh, yeah, I would like to create uh, this with as a JSON response within set payload There is one transform message or uh, data view. With the use of data view, we can even set the payload. For example, we wanted to just replace the set payload and set in this text. Hello world. that yeah, now if you see the response data type now we are receiving it as json since we have explicitly set the type as application json and there is a return string hello world We want to make this as a more of JSON format by adding a field. We are setting it to object uh, data type and there is a key message and the value to message is hello world. Along with hello world, What is the default value in the main type uh, when we take the transformative format in the output? Whether yeah. we need to enter the output as it will be some other method if we uh, place the transformative format. If uh, we don't uh, specify this, yeah, um, it will be by default DW or Java. Yeah, we can see that. By default, it will give you the text as I mean output as text as the Java one. Okay. If we do not specify the type, then it will come as a text. Mm -hmm. That is a Java simple Java response type. Now, yeah, now, since uh, it is a data view, we need to specify this data view and the version and also the output type output application slash JSON and three hyphens to uh, separate the declaration section and the payload section we are going to create this object type what was the key name that we wanted to display message Along with hello world, we wanted to display some name. A 
and that name for example we wanted to access using attributes dot query params dot name so we can use the query param so we need to use the attributes as a keyword yes And that we discuss in detail how we can use uh, attributes you can see this is a json format we are getting and after hello world there is name i mean mule mule is nothing but the name that we have specified as a query parameter and if we change this then the response also will be changed can you see the difference yeah and that is how we can uh, access the query parameters now to discuss in detail I'm going to stop this project. In name right now, we will be give XML so if you don't make a file format, then yes, it will uh, the output of uh, response will be XML. But we need to make sure that uh, it is following the standards that are needed for XML or any data format that are needed. Now we are going to create a new file, new configuration file, and here we are going to set it as attributes flow, for example. Sorry. Since the name was incorrect, we can rename it by using a refactor option right click on that and choose the option refactor and then rename i'm going to open this xml here all the mule flows we will define will reside within the source main mule section this the folder structure here is source main view, main resources, main java. That means all the mean flows and components that are needed like uh, any configurations we can define within the main section only. And if we need to define any java classes we are going to create under the folder structure source main java. And the resources are Maybe if we need to add any properties files that we are going to add within the source main resources. Now we are going to create a new flow. And here we need to use HTTP listener. We are giving the resource name as attributes. As we will discuss, whenever we create a flow, we need to make sure we have proper loggers.
copy the name of the flow give it in the browser And as per best practices, whenever we define any message, we also need to name the component. That is a display name. So if any developer looks into the flow, they can easily understand the process of the flow. Now, we wanted to uh, in this flow we are going to access the attributes attributes are defined in three categories like headers query parameters uri parameters Now, we'll do one thing, we we'll pass one header, one query parameter, and then we'll see URI parameter. For that, we are setting a variable. Yeah, why we need variable? Why can't we use the same attributes throughout the flow? If we are going to use any other uh, connectors or any component, for example, like HTTP request or uh, any web service consumer, then the attributes that are before that component will be lost. That is why we need to make sure that the information that we needed throughout the flow has to be stored in some variables. That is why we needed to create the variables we will name this variable as header right v header transaction for example And to assign the value to this header transaction ID, we need some attributes. Attributes dot headers dot transaction ID. Since we are defining a variable v header transaction ID and assigning some value which is coming from headers transaction ID, that means whoever is going to consume this attribute service, they need to send some headers to this service. Then only this value will be assigned to the uh, variable, otherwise, the value will be null by default. Now we are going to create one more variable to store the query parameter. Now, since it is a query parameter, we can name it as QP name. And how we are going to access the variable of this? Sorry, access the query parameters same way from attributes attributes dot query params dot name now we have created two variables and in response 
we need to set a payload that means we want to send the response in json format by uh, providing the input information we'll do data viewer transform message here we are setting the type as application json transaction id so to access the variables within the flow we can use the keyword vars vars dot v header transaction ID that we have created earlier comma and another field name name and the name value we wanted to assign from the variable vars dot qp name and along with this we wanted to create a status field success or failure just consider this as a success scenario and we are setting the status as success and here if you see for the transaction id and name we are providing a dynamic value dynamic value means whatever that we are receiving from the input request we are setting them and assigning to these variables these fields and for the status we are setting a hard coded or static value static means we are directly assigning that value as success that we know it is for every request that comes through this processor the value will be success only for all the messages that is why we call it as a static now we are going to save this and run this we can run the application in two ways we can uh, go to the package explorer right click on the project and select run as mule application and from the canvas pane you can right click on the flow and click on the run project now we can see the application is deployed to test this again we need to go to postman and now here we need to provide the resources attributes and we are sending the information we'll see what will happen if you observe the response here there is no transaction id and the name these values are coming as null and status is success why the values for transaction id and name are coming as null since we were not sending any of the details that are needed by this attribute service So the service how are we accessing we need to mention this is the http method protocol
host name or it can be host IP. and then port after that resource name yeah now we we wanted to send some values like for the first variable this is oh, we have forgot one more thing assigning some display name okay yeah this header transaction id is needed from request headers so we need to copy this one and come to postman and in postman we have these sections like to define the method of request and to define the url here and then there are sections here, here parameters headers now we wanted to define a header transaction id and transaction id can be any value here we are giving it as 0 1 and what was the other uh, parameter we did it is a query parameter name copy this uh, key and within this postman section there is a parameters here we are going to provide the key as name and value as max Whenever you form these uh, parameters and headers, you can observe this uh, URL was changed with a question tag. Whenever you add any query parameters, it will be appended in the URL and supplanted by ampersand symbol if there are multiple query parameters. And each parameter value will be assigned after the equal sign. Now, since we have only one parameter, query parameter, there will be a name and the value of the name. Now, we are going to send a request to the service. And the difference you can observe is whatever the values that we have provided to query parameter and the header. These values are coming within the response from the service as a payload. It is a response payload and there is a response HTTP code. Based on HTTP code, we can, I mean, instead of uh, going through the whole message or whole payload while processing in our service or in our application, we can quickly check the HTTP response code. And if it is valid one, then we can uh, iterate through in our application. Now, this is how we can say it. As we said, these values were dynamic and we can change them from the request. And transaction and I am going to name it as zero. So based on the request parameters or input request details, we are sending a response to that particular client. So yeah, this is about the query parameters, headers, 
and uh, we'll see one thing uri parameter example now to define the uri parameter first within the resource we need to create a uri parameter uh, we need to go to the http listener and there after the resource we need to create a uri parameter by representing the key within the flower braces if you see here i am adding a slash and after that there is a flower brace and uh, yeah we want to name it as attribute id for example So here our URI parameter name will be the attribute ID. If we need to make use of this attribute ID within our flow, then we need to create this variable and assign that particular attribute ID value to some variable. So we URI, URI parameter and then attribute id since it is attribute id attribute id and we need to follow a standard and that standard we are uh, maintaining it is a kml case and the first letter of any variable we are giving it as a lower case and the name uri parameter and then the attribute here attribute is a word that is why we are mentioning the first letter as capital letter and then id within id i as capital letter and then t as small now the value we need to assign is from attributes dot uri params dot attribute id And since we need to send the particular attribute value or URI parameter value, send in the response, we need to define a new field for that within the payload that we are setting. This transform message is nothing but a data with expression language. We can transform and modify the content of the payload or maybe content of any variables as well now you are going to set as id where's dot what was the variable name vup attribute id comma so after each and every field, we need to specify the comma in JSON form. So without declaring the variable, uh, can we access the uh, query parameters, uh, set heads, and the URL addresses? Yes, we can access them directly within the data view also. That is possible, but if there is any a major component or connector in between these uh, uh, message transformations or message processors then the variables uh, that attributes will be modified that is why we are assigning it to variables and then we are using it in our present scenario we can even directly access them for example instead of creating it yeah now we can do one thing we are going to create one more field name attribute and under these attributes we wanted to access this all the attributes directly under a new attributes object for example headers attributes dot headers comma query parameters attributes dot 
query params, comma, URL params, and attributes dot URL params. Since we have not specifically mentioned any of the particular header, so whatever the headers that comes in input request, all those headers will be assigned to this header key. Now we can observe that difference uh, with a new uh, request. Now I am going to save these changes. Yeah, before that, uh, since it is a set payload, right? And we are going to name it as DW set payload. When we need the component set payload. We can even use the set payload component also. We should not use the transformation. Yeah, for simple transformation or simple uh, assignment, we can directly use the set payload component. But we are having multiple uh, mappings and uh, transformation. Then we are going to use this transformation or a data view component. Save it. Yes. When you send the data in Postman to receive the any customer? Yeah. We have defined this service, right? On which endpoint this service has to run. We are mentioning it in the configuration slide. It is going to run on local host 0.0. .0. This is the host IP address and the port name. And this information we are sending it from postman if for example i am providing a different port number which was configured within the service then we'll see okay the body will comes the object will assign the values how to no i didn't get your question body and the collection of subjects We'll send the we are not sending the body here. When you send body, usually we will send a payload or body within the post method or maybe put method or patch methods. But usually we do not send the payloads by get, method. get methods as a best practice. Yeah. Now I'm going to send the request. Yeah, you can see what is the response we are getting. Could not send request error connecting to the particular post and IP. I sorry, port number. post and port number. See, because this service is not running on this host and port, you will not get any response. So we are going to correct it and send a request. You can observe that there is an error, no listener for endpoint. That means at least there is a service running on this host and port, but with this particular resource, there is no endpoint or flow configured within your service. Then you need to go to your flows and observe what was the difference. Or you can even observe the logs. It will suggest you the different listeners available within your application what was it saying there is a it it represents all the services that comes through and attribute after that there is a attribute id it is a url parent that means you need to invoke this service with a uri parameter now after the url we are going to provide a URI parameter 578. This value I am just giving it as a random number. You can provide anything. It will become a URI parameter. And I am sending the details. Now you can see within the response we are getting so many details. Actually what why what was that we have configured within the data view? We just said the transaction ID, name, 
id this attributes headers and status here within headers we have so many things from the input request that is why it is returning all those input headers transaction id user agent accept this information by default we are sending it through the post and query parameters query parameter that we have sent from the request it is name query parameter key and the value we have sent through the request and the uri parameters what was the uri parameter that we have attributes, attributes. after the attributes there is a uri parameter ID. that is why we have attribute id 578 yeah. now just for the sake of attributes and query parameters uh, needs to be written within this attributes field or this is the object within object it is not a direct value this attributes is an object and you can observe that even the headers is an object by default because headers can contain multiple fields or multiple values that is why it is an object now instead of adding in the query params section we are going to give you name address okay yeah and then we are going to provide one more header yeah so we will mention the source from where we are sending this source postman you can even mention this kind of information and where you want to send this information target for suppose we want to send this information to some target uh, or some other application or database for example then send a request now you can see the extra information that we have sent is returning within the response without any additional code because we have configured in such a way whatever the attribute headers or query parameters that comes in to the request or flow we are setting directly all the attributes and query parameters everything But if you see this transaction ID, name and ID, these values are only a string values because we are sending those as string values. Yeah. So this is about the running your application. Now we can see only the one difference. Uh, we just want to stop the flow we will run in debug mode we will observe difference i am going to stop the application and run in debug mode debug the project click on proceed to run your application in debug mode we need to add breakpoints So click on no. The breakpoints can be added to the message process only, not to the source components. I'm going to add a breakpoint and check whether it is deployed or not. Yes, it is deployed. In our earlier scenario. When we send a request, we used to get the response immediately without any break. Now we wanted to send a request. If 
you see now it is waiting for the response to be processed now you can come to the Unipon studio and observe it the flow is stopped here on the breakpoint where you have put your sorry where you have added the breakpoint the flow was stopped at that point and you can even check the debugger section within the panel you can observe what is the logger it is suggesting new info message so once this component is processed you will get this message and what was the payload that you have received as an input there is no payload and what is the root id as of now how many variables were there so all these kind of information you can check by putting a breakpoint and running in the application debugging it is for a developer uh, friend, uh, because whenever any exception occurs or any uh, unknown thing were happening within the flow if you need to know you need to put a breakpoints and observe the flow on the track and you need to track the events for that purpose you need to run the application in debug mode for now we are just going to process it to the next component click on next processor and if you see here one variable is created with the name we had a transaction id because we have passed the second component or where we were creating a variable and that variable is created by the point of time we have reached vqp name component that is how you can make sure if all the message process are working correctly or not till here we have created three variables and you can even check these attributes all the attributes information query string query parameter path all this information is available and now you can go to this postman and observe the response so response wise it will not change but to observe the event we can put a big point and we can track through it yeah that is for today's session we can continue okay.